We're a very rookie crew, a very young crew. We have uh, four rookies, first-time flyers, mm -hmm. and three one-time flyers. So as you can see, compared to the, the average shuttle crew today, we're a very inexperienced crew. So uh, knowing that, uh, we've gone to great lengths to make sure that our inexperience isn't something that's going to hamper us. We've worked very closely, uh, worked hard together over the last two years to, to make this mission a success. That was astronaut Michael Anderson. And uh, before we talk with uh, June Scobie Rogers, whose husband uh, piloted the Challenger, we're going to make contact with David Neal in Rusk, Texas, who was also an eyewitness. David, what did you see? Good evening. Um, I was outside at the uh, Palestine Airport where we have our uh, normal monthly fly-in, and I happen to be looking upwards, looking for any aircraft. And I look up and I see a bright object. Uh, my only guess was, you know, a passenger jet with a large contrail. But uh, it, it immediately thereafter word started fanning out the little pieces, very bright blue uh, colors. And so I immediately called the airport manager, who then called Fort Worth Center. And uh, supposedly we were the first people to call on that. Um, at first, you know, that's all we thought it was, a passenger jet. And we were very afraid uh, that we had just witnessed maybe a terrorist attack of some sort. Um, and then going inside, waiting to hear some news of it on the news, uh, we then learned it was the, uh, the space shuttle. Did you, David, did you see anything that looked like a fire? I did not see anything look like a fire. I just saw uh, what looked like the sun reflecting off an airplane. And then it started to turn a blue color and a lot of little pieces coming off of it and fanning out in all different directions. Wasn't it going remarkably fast to you? Uh, yes, it was. And uh, being in the aviation business for as long as I was, I didn't believe it could be at 200,000 feet like they have been reporting because there were contrails even on the little pieces that were coming off of it. And it did seem to be very, going very fast. You think it was lower than 200,000 feet based on your experience with flight? Yes, sir. And a lot of the other pilots there at the airport believe the same thing. That's interesting. Um, we'll follow up on that. You thought it was lower. Yeah, David, thanks uh, very much. David Neal, an eyewitness on the scene in Rusk, Texas at the airport, will be calling on you again. Joining us now from Chattanooga, Tennessee, is June Scobie Rogers, the widow of Francis Dick Scobie, who was commander of the Challenger on January 28, 1986. Where were you this morning, June? I was at home. Um, I just turned on the television while I was emptying the dishwasher, and when I heard um, lost communications, I dropped everything. Um, brought back some terrible memories from my family. It's a tragedy for the entire nation, isn't it? You're the founding chairman of the Challenger Center for Space Science Education. You've stayed deeply involved in this. You've remarried, right? I have. I have. Um, I met Don Rogers, a general in the Army at Arlington on Easter and um, his wife had died and we became good friends and we've moved here to Chattanooga. And the Challenger Centers, um, all the families came together to say, you know, the world knew how our loved ones died and we want the world to know how they lived. And the families for the Columbia crew must be devastated with the numbing shock that we know so well. What would you say to them? Um, just to take each day, one day at a time, to feel the love of family and friends and to know that their loved ones have um, touched the face of God, that they're in God's hands. Um, they were heroes. They were heroes like our firemen and police and our military, they were serving their country with a dream vision of what was needed for space exploration. And they were wonderful examples and, to our nation. And they knew the dangers, didn't they? They know. When you're working in that field, in space exploration, they're pioneers for the country, for our planet. They take that risk knowingly, and that makes them even 
that much greater a hero. We're going to take a break and come back with June Scobie Rogers and talk more about living after such a tragedy. She lived with it after Challenger, and today we have Columbia, and then we'll meet a major panel get-together on this special edition of Larry King Weekend. We'll have another one tomorrow night. And joining us among the guests will be one of the veteran space uh, correspondents ever, Hugh Downs. Don't go away. And when you look out the window, you're not looking at the stars or the moon, you're looking at the Earth. And when you look at the Earth, invariably people say that they think about people and they invariably say they think about the people that they kind of know and care about. That was the late Captain David Brown. June Scobie Rogers, widow of uh, Francis Dick Scobie, commander of the Challenger. Do you think that as a society we're kind of sanguine now about space travel, that unless something like this happens, we treat it as a, just another day of flight? I was so happy for NASA that um, safety was the first issue that they were concerned about every day. That's their focus. But the um, public, do you so think the public unfair. gave much thought to it? I think that um, they looked at it more than likely like any, any flight, any airplane flight. It's another mission. But I know, I know the astronauts and their families didn't look at it that way. It's, um, it's truly a tragedy for that loss. You uh, lost your husband, now your son, is that true? He flies F-16s in the reserves? My son is an F-16 pilot, Rich Scobie. I've talked to him the first thing this morning and several times today. Um, and I've talked to my daughter, Kathy. They're um, wonderful, wonderful children. And um, it's very difficult for Dick Scobie's parents. The um, commander, um, husband had just sent a message on the 28th of January um, to say it was the anniversary for the loss of Challenger and he wished well the families and the Challenger crew. It's so unfortunate that the families of Columbia didn't get to greet them and congratulate them on a successful mission. Is there a chance, is there a chance your son might go to the Gulf? Um, my son might be called to duty, um, as will many sons. Um, and that's a difficult time in our nation, a traumatic time, I'm sure, for our president. He gave a wonderful message to the Columbia crew today. Um, my heart is to him as well as he is so concerned um, with our nation at a time when and we may be close to war, and loss of a space shuttle crew, and nation indeed yeah. the world is in yeah. disaster today. Thank you, June. Good seeing you. Good seeing you looking so well, too. June Scobie Rogers, the widow of Francis Dick Scobie, commander of the Challenger. And when we come back on the phone with Walter Cronkite, and we'll visit with Scott Carpenter, an original Mercury 7 astronaut, Jerry Leininger, the former NASA astronaut and retired U.S. Navy Medical Corps captain. Alan Bean, former astronaut, was a lunar module pilot for Apollo 12. That was the second lunar landing. And Senator Bill Nelson, Democrat of Florida, one of the leading congressional experts on NASA who made a space flight himself. They're all next, right after this. This is indeed a tragic day for the NASA family, for the families of the astronauts, who flew on STS-107, and likewise tragic for the nation. We trust that the prayers of the nation will be with them and with their families. And again, a more courageous group of people you could not have hoped to know.